it's hard if your wife isn't happy with you to feel good when you come home. You could be feel great from your work, come home, and then she's saying, you forgot to bring home the milk and you didn't do this and you should have done that. And that floor, you left your shoes in front of the TV set. Do you think I'm supposed to like clean up after you all the time? You know, all these messages just knock a man down as, as opposed to if he does leave his socks in front of the TV set or shoe and you don't want to pick up after him, don't pick up after him. Let it sit there for a few days and say, oh, honey, would you pick up your shoes and help me clean up this room? And he'll pick up the shoes. And I'm laughing because I'm remembering when I used to leave T-shirts in front of my T-shirt drawer. I take off my T-shirt and I pull another one out. Okay, so that was T-shirt will be on the floor. I didn't think to put it in the hamper, which is only in a closet next to that. So finally, Bonnie said, you always leave your T-shirts on the floor. Can't you remember? I said, I'll try, I'll try. But it was a negative message. Men forget negative messages. We remember positive messages. So then so, so, so I said to her, I said, honey, just let the pile get big enough. And then I'll see it, remember it, and I'll put it in the hamper. Well, it was really hard for her to do that. She says, it's not- <laughs> let the pile get big enough. The pile gets bigger. So then what she did, as I said, then if you notice the pile and I'm at any stage and I'm in the room, it's fine to ask for my help. Just say, John, would you help me clean up the room and put your t-shirts in the hamper? Now look at the wisdom of it. Would you pick up? So she she did this on another day. She basically said, Oh, John, would you would you help me clean up the room and pick up and put your put your t-shirts in the hamper? Now she had already cleaned up the bedroom. Okay. And as part of why I love her, she love hates a certain extent, which is you know, she had to have everything beautiful in the house and I'm kind of messy, but we worked that through. And this is part of how we did it, which was she, instead of complaining, which I don't want to complain, you forgot again, you forgot again. Instead, what she did, she waited for a little pile to get there. And then she said, oh, John, would you help me clean up the room? Again, a request for help. Man, well, I'll, I'll help you. And then she simply said, would you put your t-shirts in the hamper? And then she didn't say, you forgot to do it. It's only two feet away. Why can't you remember? It's not a big deal. Can't you just do this if you love me? And I, yeah, none of that stuff. She just said, oh, would you help me clean up the room and move your t-shirts into the hamper? And I said, sure. And I put t-shirts in the hamper and then she took a deep breath. <sighs> now look how beautiful the room is. And I went, yes, I did that. I took credit for cleaning the whole room. Okay. So, <laughs> and, and women would think, Oh, that's so generous of her. Yes, but it's oh, so wise of her. It didn't motivate. Within a couple of times, she did a couple of times. After that, she never had to do it again. And then later on, I would pick up her stuff. And of course, I say, did you notice I picked up your head? I want a little credit for it. But it was, it was so sweet how to approach a man in a way that always makes him feel he's helping you. You're not judging him based on the past. He hasn't failed you 15 times before. What a nuisance he is. And I know you have these feelings inside. They build up. Don't share them with him. Okay. First of all, they won't build up if you feel I can ask for what I want. And you start with little things, then you get to bigger things. Then you also have to recognize you're on your male side. You're pushing down your female side all day to a certain extent, various degrees for different women. So when you come home from time to time in the beginning, you do what my feeling letter process. You go through, write out a piece of paper. This is work. You have to do some work on yourself instead of expecting everything from him. Write out what you're frustrated about during the day. And you use the phrase, I feel frustrated. And you're exploring what frustrates me, what's not working for me. And then I feel disappointed. And then you let you look at what's feeling disappointed about, you know, because life is never everything you want, right? So, right. Right. But, and sometimes when you start feeling disappointment, you might also feel sad and you write out what you feel sad about. But starting with just disappointment, because if you're on your male side, it's not easy to go to your, your feeling sad. It's easy to go to disappointment, though. It's easy to go to frustration. And now with frustration, you might go a little deeper and I'm angry that he said this and he didn't do this. So frustration, disappointment, then my concerns. What are some of my concerns? It's just doing a little inventory. See, these are emotions inside of us that you can get to your female side, your concern and writing out a few concerns and you'll be able to click into, and I'm afraid this isn't going to happen. I'm afraid this is going to happen. Write out your fears and then write out what you're embarrassed about. Uh, and you can always, every day, if you're getting older, I'm embarrassed, my clothes don't fit. You know, it's a simple thing, you know, <laughs> if that's what you feel. But if you feel no embarrassment in your life, you're kidding yourself because we're all flawed human beings and we want to be better. And it only brings you back to that vulnerable part that wants to be better. So I feel, in, I feel embarrassed about this. And what I would really like, write out what I wish, 
write out what I want, then write out what I'm grateful for, write out what I'm happy about, write out what I feel confident about, and write out what I'm proud of. You see, you are processing yourself. You're going from your negative emotions to your positive emotions. With practice, now you can do the same exercise with him. It's a major estrogen stimulator, which is you basically say, oh, honey, I'm so happy to talk to you. Glad you're home. He says, okay, what did I do right? Or what can I do? It's just, I had, I had, I just want to tell you about my day. I just need to talk about for a few minutes because I was really frustrated about something. Would you listen to me for five minutes? That's it. Would you listen to me? If I get it out, I'll feel better. You have to say that. And you say, it's not a big deal, but if I get it out, remember, if you say to a man, it's not a big deal, he'll relax and hear whatever you have to say. As soon as you say it's a big deal or he thinks you're saying it's a big deal, he just goes, why is it a big deal? And wants to push it down. But you just say, you know, I just, sometimes I just need to talk about this. It just makes me feel better. If you're married, you could say, it makes me feel closer to you. But you really don't have to say anything. And I prefer you don't say anything because I just need to have you listen, hear it, and I'm done. You'll see, I go from positive to negative. I go from negative to positive. It just helps me. So would you take a few minutes to listen? You don't have to say anything. Don't do anything. Just hear me out and then I'll feel closer to you. And he might not understand this. You just say, why do you think 90% of the people who go to therapists are women? They just want to talk because when they talk, they make female hormones. So just let me talk for five minutes. You just be present. That's all. And then afterwards, you, you say, oh, I feel so, I must feel good. I feel happy. I get to be with you and go in for a hug and say, thanks for listening. And then go into another room. So he doesn't feel like he has to talk or you think he has to say some magic word because you're upset. There is a magic word that men can say, but they're not listening to this talk. But what I say is, <laughs> instead of my body, my brain wants to give all these solutions of why you shouldn't be upset about these things or little things, it's no big deal. That's why you say to them in the beginning, it's no big deal. Men always want to tell you it's no big deal. So you you already said it, so you didn't need to say that. He had nothing to say then. But he's still going to think you could look at things differently, his way of looking at it. So to avoid that, you go out of the room. And if you're a man listening to my message, there is something you can say, which is help me understand that better. Mm, yeah, the woman's going to love that. Yes, just it's magic. Help me understand that better. Tell me more. And yeah, I'm not even telling you anything. Just having you say that make me feel good. It's so good. It's so good. And and then when she seems to be done, what else? It's, it's, women have so much in there to come up. It's surprising that there's more. So this is a dance that men can learn, but women can also just take the initiative of asking for help and getting what they need. That's female power. That's your empowerment is I don't have to do it all. What do I need? How do I get it? One is you teach him how to listen. Next, next is you reveal to him your insecurities. And you're going to say, you know, now this is after you're dating for a while. You want to keep that passion because it could be gone if he's like doing porn or he's ejaculating a lot or you had a whole bunch of sex. He's going to lose interest in you pretty quick. Because it's too much estrogen. He needs to rebuild his testosterone. He needs to pull away to rebuild his testosterone. And look at me. I've got, I do sex all the time at 72. I can do it more than once or once every 10 days, whatever. It takes a little longer for men to recover because I've learned how to have sex without ejaculating. So I'm always in the mood and I'm always connected to it. It never disconnects. But that takes a lot of maturity and new knowledge and skills to do that. But you just don't want to push too much sex. That's the message I'm giving. And if you do have too much sex, he's going to need time to go to his cave to recover. And I just going on this little vacation for four days, just with her all the time, caring for all the time, having a good time. I came home and I realized, gee, you know, I'm not feeling my normal attraction for her. Where did it go? I said, oh, I just need to cave time. So I told her, I'm just going to watch two movies and the news on TV tonight. And, and you just do what you need to do. And- after I had all that, then suddenly I just felt it. Once I got my cave time, my testosterone came back up and I want to have sex with her. But before that, I did not want to have sex with her. It's take, men need distance to want to connect if you don't have distance. So part of the distance is that she's more feminine, I'm more masculine. That's polarity. Then you will have that attraction. Even though you have all of this for the man, even though you have all this um, female hormone that takes away your desire for sex, it's the polarity that can create it. You know that all you know. Thirty years you've been with my wife, always open to having sex, and, and and very important. If I wasn't practicing orgasm while ejaculation, then we don't have too much sex. There's always at least a week in between, and then we go on a vacation. Yeah, we can indulge in all that, but then he's going to need time to recover. So now you went on this hot day with him. He's connecting with you. He's feeling a lot of affection towards you. He needs to pull back. That's Mars Venus. 
101 Minute from Mars, he has the rubber band. He needs distance to find his affection for you, to have his desire to connect back to his female side, which is what you are. However, if he goes off to porn, then he, he doesn't ever feel that need to come close to you. So that's one of the challenges women have today. So you want to at least don't spend a lot of time with him. Don't have long conversations with him. Don't have a lot of connection with him. A little bit, feel good. And then cre you have to force the, the distance with him. That will always make him desire more for you as opposed to too much connection makes too much estrogen in men too much estrogen in women, you, you start to feel needy. Oh, this is something I like. I want this. And that, at that point, he's pulling away and then your heart feelings are hurt. So that's another dynamic of never, ever, ever when a man calls you back after two weeks of ignoring you, say, why didn't you call? No. What you can do instead is get your need met, which is connection. You can do that with text messages. It's a great thing that we can do now is rather than say, why didn't you call or waiting for him to call? It's just a little text message. Uh, you're familiar with Lauren's text message techniques that she has in her, her class, Understanding Men, which I highly recommend as well. Michelle's magnificent. Lauren is magnificent. And she has a, a six-week course for women understanding men. So when he pulls away, don't call him up, but send him a FYI, a note, just a short little note. I, I just went for coffee and I, I had, they had the most amazing almond croissants. It was like there was rainbows in the sky. All you're doing is telling him, <laughs> you um, imagine he asked you, how was your day? He didn't ask you. He's pulling away. But what happens is when men pull away for a while, then they're afraid to come back because they're afraid I hurt your feelings or, or you'll be mad at me or whatever. So count that one out and move on. You want to just create the message of you're talking, you're here, and you're happy even though he's not in your space. Okay, that's it. He needs to remember, yeah, she's a happy woman. Yes, she's fulfilling. She's easy to please. Okay, I like that. So you just, it's amazing just to have a, a woman not asking for more at that point. He's pulling away. You don't ask for more. It's when he's coming close to you, that's when you ask for more. And you ask for little things. Would you do this for me? It would be so helpful if you did this. You know, if you have a... You know, I have one woman who's just fallen madly in love with this man because he fixes her her sort of physical things, her toilet, he fixes her deck, he fixes this, and she can't help but just open her heart to him. And then when he doesn't do it, uh, she gets all upset. I said, no, you have to keep asking. Remember, you asked him, you told him, I had this problem, would you do this for me? If she probably didn't say, would you do it? She just sort of put it out there. What I'm saying is actually say, would you help me? It's a magic phrase to have. Uh, men always... That's what we all want to be in relationships. We want to help each other. It's just that that's the male side of us. Women have a male side of them. They have a lot of testosterone, just not as much as men. And what we know to be the case, I think we'll finish up with this. Biologically, our heart closes when our stress levels go up. Okay, this is biology. Okay, you literally have less blood flow coming to the to the left prefrontal cortex, which is optimism. And when you're not feeling optimistic, your heart will tend to close. You're feeling pessimistic. Pessimistic is the right side of the brain is activated. So under stress, if you have any blood flow going to your brain at that time, it will go to the right side. You want to have, you want to be able to go right side and left side. Do, do left side negative with your journaling or with your girlfriends or with your therapist or with your coach. These are all important things. Don't go to him for that. But when you do the Venus talk, you can talk about other things that are bothering you, not him. That's all key to this. I mean, it's a huge distinction right there. Yeah, it's so big. It's so big. And he's going to give advice in the beginning. And you can very gently just say, well, that makes sense. But actually right now, I just need to talk about this. And, and you're, you know, just you being someone listening to me makes me feel good. I'm not alone. You know, for me as a woman, being feeling alone is a big source of stress. And just that you're with me, it just makes me feel so good. That's why I like going out with you. The other night we were at this movie and, you know, you walk me to the car, you know, like I met a friend, just a woman who's single. And, and I was with my wife and she was single and bumped into each other at the ice cream store. May I walk you to your car? And she said, no, I can do it myself. I let her do it herself. And maybe <laughs> I should have just said, no, I'm going to do it anyway. Actually, that would have made her feel much better. I just forgot to do it. It was like, I'm happy to walk you to your car. It's just a, yes, I, I'm a confident woman. I can do all this myself. Let him help you. And when he does it, you'll feel something. And what you feel may be a little embarrassed. Maybe you feel a, 
like that felt really good. Or maybe you'll feel sad at, that I don't have that in my life. This is all good. Get you to feel your emotions of vulnerability. And the biggest one that I was building up to, doing a lot of foreplay for this point, because it's a hard sell, but it's so beautiful. The ultimate technique is when you get to that stage in a relationship, not on your first, second, third, fourth date, okay, this is, you still have all the dopamine, the attractions there, but you get to a certain point where, where you say, you know, for me to have sex, I need to feel I'm in a committed relationship. And that's that's how you bring up that subject, by the way. It's when he says, why can't we go further? Because I like to be in a committed relationship. It just doesn't feel good if I'm opening my heart to you and you're off with some other woman. Everybody knows that. So it's, it's all fine. So that's a dynamic. Now you're in a committed relationship and then you start to feel safer with him. Then you say, you know, what I've learned in my life, kind of like how Bonnie told me, you know, if you were to do that, then I would feel more insecure. I couldn't grow in my love. You can just say, you know, I'm this confident, capable woman at work, but there's a there's a vulnerable part of me that that likes to ha hear you say you like me, you enjoy being with me, you think I'm beautiful, that you want to be with me. But every woman deep inside wants a commitment that that nobody's going to take you away. I want you to be my man. I want to be your woman. Something along those lines. You have to find your own language for it. But the bottom line is. What I've found is that if I can express my own insecurities and you reassure me, I will feel so good. So just so I'll feel so good, even though maybe there's other women that don't have insecurities, I have insecurities, but that's why I appreciate you so much. One technique you can say to reveal insecurities is you can say, you know, you're the most amazing man. I feel like you're a diamond, you know, and if you have a lot of diamonds, you're afraid somebody's going to take them and you're like my diamond. And so I, I, when I love you so much, I start becoming afraid of losing you. And I know you love me. I know you care about me. You do so many things for me, but I still have this part. The better you are, the more insecure I get in touch with. And so to hear you say you love me is really helpful. And for me to say to you, do you love me? And then you say, and of course, I know you love me intellectually, but emotionally, do you love me? And then you say, I love you. And then I'll say, how much do you love me? And then you say, I love you with all my heart. And then I'm going to say, "Are you? do you like being with me? And I'm going to say, I love being with you. I like being with me. Did you enjoy going to, doing this for me the other day when I asked you? Yes, I love doing it. These little things I'm happy to do. Are you sure if I ask for little things, it's okay for to, that, you, that I can ask you? Yes, you can ask me for anything. So what you're revealing in words, that's just very important, in words, you're revealing in words to him your insecurities. Because this is going on when men are in their cave. Is he mad at me? Is he punishing me? What do I have to do to get him back? This is insecurity. This is a sweet exercise that you just say, this will just help me stay in touch with my female vulnerability, which makes estrogen. I need more estrogen. As older I get, I need more estrogen. So this seems, it's awkward for me, maybe a little awkward for you, but if we do this, you'll see, I'll feel good. And I think you'll feel good because I really need it. I really appreciate it. So it's such an easy task for a man to just live, listen to her for a few minutes as she's, do you love me? How much do you love me? Do you like me? Do you think I'm beautiful? Do you always want to be with me? Am I the one for you? And just to hear your positive responses and whatever other little insecurities like that come up, there's a bunch that can come up. Then, then... When he says, yes, I love you, he will feel his love more. Why? Because you're letting it in and you're feeling it more. So you need the reassurance. And when he provides it, it's literally like he plants his flag out there and he'll defend that flag and his brain will keep finding reasons to justify and be right that he says, I love you. It's not enough for love to be grow just to secretly feel inside. Well, sure, I love my partner. But men don't feel it as much as when you're needing it and he says it and he solved the problem when giving her what she needs. And biologically, your estrogen will go up. Just like when, you know, when people clap for me, my testosterone goes up. When my wife is happy to see me, my testosterone goes up. When she asks me to go, will you make orange juice for me? Uh, tonight, she says, we, you know, will you take me to the grocery store and we're going to get a steak and make a steak for me? I said, okay, happy to do it. And I'm not always happy to do it. But at this point, when I'm making the steak, it's already, the ha unhappiness is gone. You know, it's a hassle to make the steak. It doesn't always come out right. You know, so I'd rather just, why don't we go to a restaurant and get steak? She's, oh, your steaks are so much better. I love them. And, and it's so sweet. Asking for help is such a beautiful way for a man to feel motivated and for a woman's estrogen to go up so she can feel more accepting, more trusting, and more appreciative of him. 
So this is a masterful technique that I said, none of that last one I just gave, this last technique of the reassurance exercise is not in any of my books. Uh, you know, Venus talks, sharing your feelings is, and asking for help is, and whole chapters on how to ask for help. But this is how to ask for reassurance. And it's a very powerful thing. Because as a man, why do you need reassurance for? It doesn't make sense to me. Of course I love you. Of course I do this. So you set it up with a with, with message. Of course you love me. You do so much for me. But because you do so much, you're like a diamond. You know, Imagine going out in public and you've got a diamond around your neck that's huge. You're afraid somebody's going to take it. So that's, it stimulates this insecurity. So I just need a little reassurance. It will take a few minutes to do. Now, once you're doing it outside the bedroom, now at the times when you're making love, when you're making love, let's do it when we make love. And while you're making love, you have this first physical arousal, then you go into emotional arousal and your estrogen levels will go so high. Her, your estrogen going so high raises his testosterone level so high and therefore he can last longer. He can be more about you. He can take you to higher levels and you feel so much connection to where you begin to feel, yes, I'm yours, you're mine, we are one. You know, it's it's like a, a sense of ownership, even though there's freedom along with it, because you're never trying to change your partner. But you're mine. It's like, you know, my car. And when I teach men, how do you have another thing about understanding a woman is empathy. When you have empathy for her, doesn't mean you're telling her how to not feel that way. You're just validating why she feels that way. Now, I might disagree with her when she feels, oh, there's so much traffic and, you know, so stressful. Well, traffic's not stressful for me. I'm very good at it, okay? So <laughs> I have no issue with it. I know how to change lanes, go there, go here. It's all exciting challenge for me, raises my testosterone. So I can't agree that too much traffic is, I don't have the experience of it having her experience, but I can experience if she says to me, I was so frustrated when there was traffic and I didn't get there in time and it was a bummer. I felt I was so disappointed and now I'm concerned they're not going to trust me next time. And I was so embarrassing when I showed up and I was like 10 minutes late. I, was, I should plan better. See, you're revealing, I can relate to all of that. See, that's emotion in, inside mm -hmm. of me. They have this emotion so he can connect to the emotion, even if he doesn't have the experience that you have. You know, be like complaining about your high heel shoes. I ain't never worn high heel shoes. So I don't know what that was like, but oh, I got to wear those high heel shoes. That, and it was so dis so frustrating for me, or I was embarrassed because I slipped out of them, whatever it is. We can relate to emotions. That's why we want to be with a woman is we want to connect with her femininity because we have a feminine side and it gets awakened by being of service, by hearing, by understanding, by doing things for a woman. Our own female side comes up and that's how we stay on our male and female side. How does a woman stay on her male and female side? Just becoming a man does not allow you to go to your female side. You have all this power on your masculine side. Now what's the power of your feminine side? They want you on both powers and that's asking for help. Taking responsibility to ask for what you want, to get what you want by asking the right way, by asking the right amount. You just can't ask for too much right away. You've got to build this up. You've got to train him. You've got to give him the experience and then gradually ask for more and more and more. And then you get married because <laughs> you feel like, okay, I can get what I need. And still you have to keep asking for more because men forget. They, we have this mm -hmm. tendency. We have this tendency. I did it once. Now I don't have to do it again. You know, it's like mission accomplished. I don't have to write this book again. I wrote it. It's done. It's out there. Go on for a long time. What do I need to write a book for? So it's it, that's their mind as you accomplish it, it's done as opposed to you have to do it again and again and again. And if you women want to feel... They want their relationship to feel like it was when the dopamine was there and estrogen was there and his testosterone was there. W what were you doing at that time? You were you were all the time concerned. Okay, is he the right one for me? Does he love me? Does he like me? Am I pretty enough? Does he want to be with me? Could he be the one for me? You were all the time looking for reassurance. And what was he doing? He was constantly looking for reassurance that this is a woman that I can fulfill. This is a woman that I have what it takes to make her happy. And when men don't get that reassurance, that's when men are giving up on a relationship. They say the same thing. They say, no matter what I do, it's never enough to make her happy. That's the bottom line for men. So her job, in a sense, is to open her heart, reassuring him all the time, as much as possible, that he has what it takes to make her happy. He doesn't have to change, but he can do more. That's because you ask, you get such a subtle distinction between complaining and asking. Complaining never works, nagging never works, asking. And if he doesn't do it the first time, ask again another time. 
Ask again the third time as if it's the first time. No emotional charge. You just know it's going to take a while to train this guy. And after three times you've asked and he doesn't do it, then realize maybe I'm asking too much. I need to sign something littler and train her with that. And then train him with that. So you build up his ability to recognize little things make a big difference. And our world teaches men little things mean nothing. Okay. If I empty trash, that's a low paying job. You know, if I write a book, that's a big paying job. So what's my priority? I'm going to write the book, bring home the bucks, make my wife happy, take her on nice vacations, blah, blah. That's the big stuff. Men do, do not have an intuitive understanding of women. We just, we're just lost. We don't understand women <laughs> at all. And that's why if you take my class, my daughter's class, which is at marsvenus.com, and you take the understanding women, it's for women only. I recommend if you're in a relationship, have your spouse take the class with you. Because as women don't understand men, men start to realize how they don't understand women who don't understand men. I mean, it's hugely revealing. I mean, it took a year and a half for us to write that one. And then she performs it, does it online. She writes them, I edit them, but it's it's an amazing, I'm just so proud of her. And of course, everybody knows he's a proud father, but it's really, really very helpful. I wanna urge women, if you wanna understand men better, Listen to all my stuff, but listen to her stuff too. And a lot of free stuff as well at marsvenus.com. Yeah, thank you, John, for mentioning that. And I highly recommend them because I really think the more we understand about ourselves, the more we understand about each other, the more tools we have. That's why I love featuring your work because the more tools we have, the more successful we can be, the more enjoyment we can get from relationships. And they really are such a beautiful part of life that could bring so much joy and so much fulfillment and so much learning. I mean, don't you think a relationship is like the ultimate classroom? It has it it been for me. It always is. It's the ultimate line. And I want to mention for women, uh, when you, I encourage women to write out their feelings, as I was just suggesting, as a way of processing what's inside. Maybe it's not the only way, but it's a way I've seen to be very effective. Always, when you have negative emotions, be able to come back to positive emotions without the outer world changing. See, as long as we wait for the outer world to change, we're using our negativity to get a result. We can't let go of our negativity. All negative emotions are subconsciously, and uh, the reason why we have anger is to intimidate people to give us more. The reason we have fear is so that we don't have to do and get other people to do for us. The reason we feel sad is have people take pity on us. The reason we feel sorry is to build trust. These are all mechanisms of a premature, uh, uncivilized human being. It's just emotional. They serve a purpose. And you never want to give up the emotional brain because that's part of who you are. You want to embrace that, kind of like a childlike part of you. You know, people say, heal the inner child. I'm all for healing the inner child by being in your adult and doing it. Don't just be like a child. <laughs> you know, what was it? Mm -hmm. I said, you know, you have to be like a child to enter the gates of heaven, but you don't become a child. Okay. Don't infantize yourself, but be like a child, which is in touch with your emotions, in touch with your feelings, your tenderness, your vulnerability, and so forth. And men can, men can go over to their female side, but they need to stay on their male side stronger. And that's why a marriage with a woman allows you to be in her and yourself at the same time. See, it's very interesting. You know, I want to be... I want to have soft feelings, tender feelings, loving feelings, compassionate feelings, empathy feelings, all of that. But if I'm only that, then I become weak. I, my testosterone goes down. So let me provide the space for my wife to be that way and then empathize with her. And now I'm on my female side. I'm providing pleasure for her when I'm in my male side and making love. So I'm feeling her pleasure. It's my pleasure. So it's no longer just about me. And it's not even trying to increase my pleasure. It's about supporting her and enjoying the moment. And, you know, there's too much goal orientation in sex. Women should just let go of having an orgasm. Who cares? I'm enjoying being with my partner. And, and men should provide that. And without the goal, because see, when you have a goal, you're on your male side. We want her to be on her female side of just letting go and enjoying the process, expressing the love, take it from the genitals into the heart. And then also asking for what you want if you're not getting it in a gentle, gentle way, in a way that works for both of you. Okay, well, we covered a lot of points today. We, we really did, John, and I loved it because every time I talk to you, I know there are new things that are coming forward that are going to help so many people. And I really thank you for your generosity 
It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for the privilege of connecting with you again. Oh, always a joy, Michelle. You know, I do a lot of interviews, but more people go to your interviews. So I have to thank you for that because my message, you know, my purpose in life, besides being a good husband, good father, my kids, my grandchildren, is to make a difference in the world. So this is a gift you give me by allowing me to bring this to so many people. The beautiful interviews and you tend to draw out the best in me. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. As always, I appreciate it so much and lovely to connect with you. And for everybody watching, yes, my channel, it really features so much of John's work because I'm such a huge fan and I've been privileged to interview him a lot over the last 10 years. So check everything out if you haven't checked it out before. And um, I'm sure we'll be back again soon. And thanks everybody for watching. We appreciate it very much. Bye-bye for now.